The HDB EMU's team have put together some slides to provide an overview of the EMU and pesticide regulatory service currently provided by HDB for the UK horticulture industry. Firstly, here's a brief reminder of why the service is needed and what it is for. On this slide, we have provided a brief summary of how the service works and the various steps in the process. In reality, the service involves a continual process illustrated on the next slide, including a series of overlapping steps. Here we provide further detail of what each step can involve. The starting point is to identify and prioritise crop protection risks. For example, due to new and emerging pests, changes in product authorizations, or increased resistance to available plant protection products. This is done in close collaboration with growers and agronomists using risk registers to capture relevant information. These registers not only track the importance of pest targets, but also show the risk of loss for active substances currently authorized for each pest and crop combination. We liaise closely with agrochemical and biological control companies to identify where there might be opportunities for emus that could fill gaps in the crop protection armory for high priority pest diseases and weeds. In step three, data of various types is usually needed to support emu and emergency authorization applications. In situations where residues data cannot be provided by the company or by counterpart organisations in Europe, AHDB commission and oversee residues trials to generate the required data. The team also uses its experience to generate the additional evidence where required to show that a proposed product will not cause harm to operators, workers and bystanders. Whilst not essential for EMU applications, Efficacy and crop safety data can be useful to guide product choice and provide justifications. This has in the past been generated through AHDB's research programme, particularly the SEPTA and SEPTA Plus projects. Steps four and five. Once we have all the required data and a case for need from industry, we can make EMU applications to CRD. Applications for emergency or 120 day authorizations are more complex and require close liaison with CRD to ensure that the emergency situation is accurately portrayed and that there are no viable alternatives for control of the target pest. There's also the need to demonstrate that stewardship approaches are in place to ensure the limited and controlled uses of the requested product. In addition, we must show how exit strategies are being developed to minimise the need for repeat emergency authorizations. After submission, many EMU and emergency applications require ongoing liaison with CRD and the relevant agrochemical companies to respond to questions in a timely fashion, supplementing the detail included in, in the application, for example, regarding residues data or work exposure risk assessments. In step six, once EMUs and EA notices are issued by CRD, they are all uploaded to the HDB Horticulture Legacy site, listed in our monthly email update and also communicated via Crop Association newsletters. EA notices together with stewardship details are emailed to all relevant levy payers and associated industry, as it's a requirement of the authorisation that the applicant, in this case HDB, provides details to a significant proportion of the sector relevant to the proposal. Finally, we continually liaise with growers, agronomists and companies to evaluate whether EMUs, when used as part of IPM, enables sufficient management of a particular pest target or whether further options need to be investigated. To bring the process to life, we've provided three case studies to provide examples of timelines, opportunities and hurdles that can be encountered at different stages in the process. This first case study prov provides an example of a relatively straightforward EMU application for a low risk product, Flipper. This product is used for the control of aphids, spider mite and white fly, which are recurring and serious pest issues across many horticulture crops. 
Our approach involves submission of eight applications covering many crops as possible across field vegetables, soft fruit, tree fruit, mushrooms and ornamentals. As a result of these applications, we secured multiple emus representing an efficient way of providing lower risk product options across industry. In the next slide, we provided an example of a more complex emu application for a conventional fungicide. Grey mould or botrytis commonly affects stored cabbage, resulting in yield and quality losses, particularly following a wet harvest. There are no conventional fungicides available for control of botrytis on stored cabbage, and therefore it has a high priority score in the Brassicas Risk Register. To address this issue, candidate products were identified through liaison with agronomists and companies and were included in SEPTA Plus efficacy trial. An effective product was identified as FELAN and an EMU application was planned with agreement from the authorisation holder. There were no residues data available to support the EMU application and so AHDB commissioned residue studies were, completed, were commissioned and completed in late 2021. Treatment is by spray application to cabbage heads in wooden boxes immediately prior to storage. There's no comparable existing use for FELAN, so we liaised with CRD to develop an appropriate risk assessment approach, then use team expertise to run operator exposure models. This application for an urgent EMU was submitted to CRD in June 2022. Their target date for completion is in June next year. But as this has been accepted as an urgent application, they will aim to complete by 1st of December 2022 at our request. Under certain, certain circumstances, CID may grant an emerging emergency use of a plant protection product. And the next slide shows a case study for this. Um, an emergency use has to be issued because of a pest disease or weed danger, which cannot be contained by any other reasonable means. This slide provides an example of a recent EA, EA application by AHDB on behalf of the brassica industry. Diamondback moth is a sporadic migratory pest, which can cause severe damage to brassicas with associated economic losses representing an emergency situation in four of the last six years. Cyantronilipril is an effective active substance for diamondback moth control, but due to ongoing data requirements, standard authorizations for use on outdoor kale and collard were not going to be available in time for the 2022 growing season. It was therefore agreed to make a repeat application for use of Benevia 10 d on these crops. In winter 2021, we worked with growers, agronomists and researchers to prepare the application. Key requ requirements included pesticide usage data collated after the previous EA in 2020, tools to provide evidence of sustained pressure, in particular, HDB funded University of Warwick to provide online summaries of moth migration risk and counts sent in from pheromone traps around the UK. And we also needed to include development of pest thresholds to trigger spray applications based on caterpillar numbers and crop growth stages. Our application was submitted to CRD in January 2022 and was authorised by a requested deadline in June. However, the emergency authorisation notice will not actually be issued until evidence of sustained pest pressure has been provided. And we have an agreed process in place with CRD and industry to enable the EA to be triggered within 24 hours if required. If the EA is triggered this summer, product stewardship will require agronomists and growers to document use of these monitoring tools and spray triggers to justify all spray applications of Benevia. We've kept industry informed with help from Brassica Growers Association and an email to Brassica Growers will be sent from AHDB if and when the EA is triggered. We've already started the planning process for 2023, together with companies, CRD and industry. The next slide outlines the features of a centralised EMU service. 
Three key points to highlight are, firstly, the service provides a single point of contact for both agrochemical companies and the regulator CRD. Companies have, com have confirmed they would not be able to justify the resources required for a, a fragmented liaison for minor crops. CRD and DEFRA also have a preference for a centralised service. Secondly, shared team expertise enables an in-depth understanding of regulatory process that helps to provide an efficient application service. Finally, a centralised service means that there is no duplication of resource for administration, trial commissioning and management and access to relevant residues data packages. There's also the ability to to provide continuity for regulatory activity that requires a long time frame.